BBC Four Collections, archive programmes, chosen by experts. For this collection, Janet Street Porter has selected programmes about post-war architecture. More programmes on this theme and other BBC Four Collections are available on BBC iPlayer. bored when I go to people's houses and you know where every bloody room is going to be. It's so predictable. So I didn't want to have a house that was anything to do with that crappy old English tradition of, you know, the front doors here and the lights are there because that's how they always have been. <laughs> I studied architecture in the 60s um, with Piers Goss and I always wanted to live in a house that was designed by an architect who I admired and I gave up architecture because I wasn't going to be as good as Piers uh, and I really rate him. Piers did a couple of uh, designs for the house. This one was more elegant and it was also really um, spiky. I just thought it was a really tough design and I also I didn't want a house that was too friendly. I didn't want a house that looked friendly. I wanted a house that looked quite hostile. I didn't want too many uninvited visitors. The building fundamentally looks like a client. If you were asked, um, who might this building belong to in London? I think well, you might guess. I think you, might, you would guess that it was Janet. I wanted the house to be built in brick and I hit on this idea of having it in all different colour bricks um, so it looks as if a shadow has hit the building. It's a kind of Trump lawyer effect. So the bottom is darker and it gets paler as it goes up. Unfortunately, um, some commentators have pointed out that <laughs> it may look more like rising damp uh, coming up the building than the sun coming down. I think the stairs seem like a Mexican house. They seem much more like an adobe house. They don't seem like a British house at all. It seems like you're in New Mexico or something. All the external doors look like railway sleepers and they have rope handles and they have fake medieval black nails in them and all the internal doors are studded with the same black nails. It, it, it was supposed to look like that kind of Orson Welles, not Citizen Kane, but Chimes at Midnight, one of those kind of really crappy Orson Welles movies. And still on the B-movie scene, the front door is made of big wooden timbers and it's got ro a rope handle and I asked for a spy hole so I could look at people. Only trouble is that what's the right height for me is about a foot higher than anybody else standing outside. All the rooms on all the floors are different shapes and none of them are boxy and square. I hate that more than anything. This is my bedroom and before we'd even bought the land or decided what the house would look like, I started to buy pictures. I've collected things for years and years, but I started to collect pictures and I had a really clear idea in my mind of what I wanted my bedroom to be like. These are neoclassical engravings by Piranesi. Uh, they're not of uh, views of Rome, which is what most people know of his work. They're of classical urns. They're very restful and my bed is on a trolley. It's on the kind of trolley that um, British Rail deliver all their parcels on. It's got wheels so that, and a brake, of course, so that I can turn it and look at different bits of my pictures uh, according to what my mood is, or I could look out the window and all the windows are different shapes. So it's all full of things to look at. I wanted a bath that was made out of rock. Nobody would build it. And then I had a little think about it and we ordered just the most giant bath I could get in there. And then I really liked the sandpipe, so I thought, what do I want to tap for? It's just kind of funky. So the bathroom look is kind of, it's, it's supposed to be a joke. Like it's not finished, but it's not meant to be. That's why the carpet's felt short at the bath and there are all rocks under it. <laughs> work in the house and it's all galvanised so I wanted the kitchen to have the same kind of steel look about it so we painted the covers with hammerite so they looked um, kind of a bit wrecked. Uh, it's got steel worktops and I used uh, 199 little uh, galvanised lintel forming things to make shelves for my uh, collection of uh, fish plates and fish moulds and when they were um, doing the walls they put this steel mesh up before they plastered it and I thought it looked fabulous so I didn't bother plastering the kitchen. Uh, 
kind of look. In fact, we've got extra mesh shot to make it look extra wrecked. Um, outside here is uh, the balcony where I sit and have my breakfast and get laughed at by lots of meat porters. The point of the living room is really just to create a space that's very comfortable and not forbidding because I think a lot of architect designed houses look very cold. We bought a wood burning stove and I decided to put it in front of the windows so that when you were sitting on the sofa you looked out the window and you had the fire rather than the traditional way of looking at a wall which I thought was rather boring. The radiators are all turned on their sides. So that instead of being rather dreary objects that sit along a non-existent skirting board, they stand upright like columns and they become features in the room. I mean, they work just as well. They make quite a lot of gurgling, but they send out the same amount of heat. And I also wanted to have a wooden floor that looked like a log jam coming through the big window of pieces of wood just set randomly splaying out from the window in the concrete, a bit like this woodcut over here. But unfortunately, English craftsmen aren't quite up to this yet. So what I've ended up with is a parquet rug. It's like a real rug, it's got a border all the way around. Um, the advantage of it over a real rug is that the corners don't curl up. It's okay, it's not what I really wanted. <laughs> I said to Piers that I wanted to have the office at the top of the house and then we put this steel staircase up the back both as a fire escape and it's the only access to the office. Now that means that people can come and see me up here without going in the house and I like the idea of going out to go to work. Uh, you know, even getting wet in the rain doesn't bother me. So it's completely self-contained up here. I can't remember how long it took to build the house about nine months longer than it was meant to. People have said, was it like having a baby? But as I haven't had a baby, I wouldn't really know. I suppose it was a bit like giving birth to that alien in Alien when it burst out of uh, John Hurt's chest. That might be more appropriate. There were terrible things happening, like the spiral staircase arrived and it ended up turning the wrong way so you couldn't get off at this floor. What? You know, so people make mistakes. Human beings do, you know. Has she never had to send a letter back to be typed? Again, you know, really. I mean, Most architects live in old houses. Even the architect that designed this house doesn't live in a modern house. And I think that unless you patronise modern architecture and make a very positive statement, nobody will respond to it. You've just got to be so proud of it and stick up for it because it's had such a bad press. And you have to show people that it's really great to live with. It's just terrific. It's much more enjoyable living here than in some fake Georgian house or in some nasty little box. Thank <laughs> you.